We have earlier talked about the value significance, we have talked about how to understand the significance, we have talked about the causes of decay and damage. So, after understanding uh, these aspects, we have to understand that we have to, uh, whenever we sort of see that there is probable value, we have to document and investigate the structure and the enlist the structure uh, in a proper way. So, today we will just give a brief idea about the documenting the heritage properties. Now, when we talked about the documenting the heritage property is actually the how the properties are identified, this is one aspect and that needs a preparation of a conservation document, uh, which the two very important aspects of preparation of the conservation document, one is the inventory of the defects and one is the condition recording. Uh, and which broadly we say the investigation, uh, we will talk briefly about that. And uh, uh, the various uh, parts of this preparation of a conservation document is inventories, evaluating, researching and documenting, listing and inventories of craft and skill and report preparation. These are very important aspects of the preparation of a conservation document. Now, we will take one by one. Uh, and also of course, the guidelines and the maintenance strategy for uh, future action, short term, long term maintenance strategy. Now, what are the steps? The step as I say, one is the inventories, the initial inspection and continuing documentation because it is a continuing process. Once you start even the work, the many, many things can come up and the diagnosis. Diagnosis is a very important part that until and unless we understand what is the real cause of the damage, we cannot sort of suggest what will be the methods or uh, how to mitigate the damage or how mitigate or how to what are the steps to be taken. So, as I say the contents of a contribution document is a measured drawing, it is very important part, problem identification the condition document or condition assessment and evaluate the causes of the decay. Now, measure drawing uh, as you can see that I take an example from some uh, monument that it is a very accurate measure drawing is the first and foremost task of the conservation document preparation. If they are available, then we can use that as a base and then we can sort of further update it. If it is not available, then we also we have to do the measure drawing. So, that becomes our basic preliminary record. Now, why measure drawing? Because to maintain the authenticity of any heritage building, it is necessary to collect all available information of the structure. Each and every building, structure or precinct or site is an authentic record of his architecture which needs to be recorded. As I say that even we change it or we do further invent, uh, inventories or intervention, we must understand at what stage we found that structure. For this the measure drawing is the first and foremost step. The next step uh, is not only the measure drawing prepare the measure drawing, but we also have to have the photographic documentation and relate the photographic documentation to each and every part of the structure. And these are visual records and these document can be used to accurately record evidences and analyze analysis of an item's history and significance. So, as I say uh, the measure drawing forms a very important preliminary step of preparing a con conservation report. This is some example of the measure drawings I have taken from the various sources and some of the references are given. Now, this measure drawing is uh, we have to as I say the measure drawing is the basic document, but after the measure drawing you have to work on it. Why? Because in measure drawing the identifying the various types of construction system that what was the original construction system, if there were some other repair. So, it is actually all this thing has to be understood, it is just not taking a measure drawing, but each and every aspect, the every element, the construction system has to be taken into uh, and recorded. The materials which are used, the technique there is in the structure over the years, if there were some changes to record that. 
and these are supported with the drawings. And when we talk about the drawing, there are different types of drawings which has to be prepared. All floor plans, all external elevation, reflected ceiling plan, floor plan, sections, all internal wall elevations, door and window detail and decorative features. Remember that it is like for uh, constructing a new building, we want the construction drawing and in uh, for the conservation work, we want the measured drawing which records that at what stage and that be becomes the basic starting point. Now, as I say that why is becomes the basic starting point? Because this also becomes a source for the problem identification and with the help of the measured drawing and other type of research. That what are the different types of structure and made a legend of these kinds of defects which we see in the structure. These are of course, for it in this case you see a root has grown over the tree and it is actually supporting the structure or a major crack has happened due to the structure. So, recording the uh, crack, the position, the vegetation growth. In this case that many of the tiles have come down and the vegetation growth is there, there is a plaster thing. So, these are some things which has to be uh, after making the preparing the measure drawing, we have to first uh, also understand that what is the problem of the building. Uh, and it does not mean that in the last example, I have shown, shown the structures which are in a very, very dilapidated condition. I purposely am showing that, that there may be some structure which may look good, well preserved, but they can have some other problem. Like this is in Gorbita, this is a temple and you can see that this is a close view of the sum. This looks well maintained, but it is very wrongly maintained. The repair work or the maintenance work which has been done is with a uh, synthetic enamel paint, it is actually stopping the breathing of the structure, it is actually interfering the authenticity of the structure, the color of the structure, the material of the structure and in a long run it is actually making new types of details which are not a part of that. And so, it may look good, it may look well maintained, but one has to understand that what is actually happening to the structure. There are other structures also, uh, it again it looks well maintained, but they have used the cement plaster and what is also thing that some of the old sort of a decorations have come out and they are putting the pictures there. It, it can be remain without any decoration, it is not an authentic idea to do that. So, again with a lot of good intention, a lot of resources available, some of the times it is uh, it is not the way it should be done, especially if it is of a heritage value. I am not uh, sort of a, uh, saying that it is uh, the owners, because it needs awareness training and capacity building that what are the better ways to preserve this structure and what are the damage it can happen. So, these are all part of this problem identification of the, the measure drawing. And this actually is the analysis, a detailed analysis should be carried out for diagnosis of the principal decay mechanism, assessment of the general strength properties and causes of the structural distress if it is any. Like crack always does not mean that it is a structural distress, but we have to see there can be dampness, there can be the cracks, there can be this type of repair measure. One has to understand and analyze with the proper expertise and if required with bringing the proper expertise that what are the problem. So, the major idea of this problem identification is identifying the analysis of causes of defect and their consequences. This one has to remember very cool that what are the causes of decay uh, and what are the consequence. As you can see that there are cracks, different types of cracks. Now, are all the cracks uh, I mean of a similar magnitude, of a similar thing. This has to be seen, it has to be tested, analyzed. Also depending, but the, the recording of the cracks and the monitoring of the cracks, understanding the crack and what are the causes of the cracks have to be really understood. Until and unless we remove the cause, we until and unless we diagnose the cause, we really cannot take any solution, just filling up the crack. We mentioned about telltale, there are different types of telltales which is actually the monitoring of the cracks which sort of can 
over a longer period of time it can sort of record the vertical and the horizontal display where the crack is a live crack and a dead crack. Uh, and also simultaneously one has to also use the other causes of decay and properly record that what are the things we have found that structure there that recording is very important. The cracks as I say that this is in hump you can see that the cracks is definitely the brilling is inclining and there is a support which has been given. Now, what is the reason of course, this type of support is sometimes required because uh, as a temporary uh, immediate measure so that it cannot cause further problem to the structures sometimes it may be due to the foundation sometimes may be due to the change in the groundwater level. So, so, there may be very varied reasons. So, one has to understand that, but at the same time while the uh, investigation can take a long time, one also has to think about that what can be the temporary measure. In this case, AMPI, a temporary buttress wall has been prepared. Now, one has to understand that from the pattern of cracks also, one can understand that what are the problems. Like in this case, this is the a shear crack, which has happened because the soft crown. So, there is an uh, in equal displacement or the uh, settlement of the building which has caused this type of crack. So, we need the structural uh, experts who can from the cracks they can say that what is happening there. Now, these type of cracks are generally due to the uh, temperature fluctuations. Now, one can understand that um, what can be the likely cause. So, if required sometime the foundation investigation also can be done and uh, as I say that you can see the severe cracks. Uh, have been uh, developed which are definitely the structural problem and why the structure is something to do with the foundation or something to do with the vegetable growth or sometimes to do with the, the other causes or wrong repair measures or sometimes maybe the initial construction was not done properly. So, there may be. So, these have to be recorded and this is a part of the conservation document. As I see the cracks is a major thing like brick walls do not normally shrink, but rather the so if the in a brick crook the crack is happening is uh, like this what we are seeing in the picture, then it is more likely due to the movement in the structure a support problem or due to the thermal expansion. The cracks in the structural brick wall may be very very serious and if the bond courses are broken then there is a risk of sudden crater the wall can suddenly collapse. So, uh, and this time we have to give the temporary um, uh, sort of adopt some temporary intermediate immediate prevention measures to support the structure and then to see that what is happening and what can be the likely measure. Now, techniques of documentation because we are saying that we also have to understand the causes of documentation. In that case, we know that the structure is already there. So, one very important thing to remember is that no destructive method should be used for the condition recording. As I say that we have to understand the foundation. So, there is a foundation investigation method or uh, which also without damaging the structure there are and there are a lot of other technologies are happening like there is a visual survey understanding from the symptoms that what can be the likely measures, photography, plaster survey because some um, just by touching or hammering one can uh, feel and there are some tools and techniques which have been developed to understand that what can be the thing. So, uh, and as I say the photographic documentation very clearly understanding each and every part uh, that how uh, from where it was it is just not a tourism type of photography actual documentation. Now, talking about the non-destructive technique which is very important uh, part of that. The preservation and rehabilitation of historic building can successfully accomplished by if the diagnosis of the state of damage of the building has been formulated. So, as I again and again saying the diagnosis is very important. The knowledge about the building construction should be deep in order to understand the role of all its features and the details and characteristics of the materials and characteristics of the structure together with the evolution of the time. Because when it was probably built then the material was in a different stage probably over the years the material has weathered or maybe surrounding development has happened. So, one has to understood uh, uh, one has to understand that how uh, these construction. So, uh, the different types of construction 
uh, techniques were used or methodologies or principles were used. So, one has to have a very good understanding of that about the soil, the uh, change in the uh, surrounding situation all this. As I say that uh, nowadays a lot of different non-destructive techniques are happening that even without really uh, proving much deeper into the structure what can understand like in this case is a use of resistograph which is a resistant trail a very effective non descriptive tool for assessing the condition of the wooden timbers. They, this is one of the example, but there are many many tools which are happening uh, and they are coming up and one has to understand that how it can be used. Now, uh, once the uh, these uh, problem identification uh, is done, the major drawing is done. The third stage is that how they are uh, actually recorded. So, what we call the condition uh, document or condition assessment uh, of the condition mapping, there are various terms are used to put that on the picture. As you can see that the measure drawing as I say is the basic step, but with the help of the measure drawing and with the help of the different types of techniques or testing one sort of has to record that and put that information on the measure drawing as you can see in this uh, images that how the different legion has been used to mark the different types of damage, decay or replacement of the materials on that. So, marking the defects in the drawing such as floor, ceiling, internal wall surfaces, external wall surfaces, decorative features and other with the detailed sort of a, um, a legend which has to be prepared depending on which context is, is there and this condition mapping forms a very important document before we start intervening within the historic structure. Now, what is the need for condition assessment? Maybe the structure is in this, maybe a small structure, but suppose we are starting to record that. It is the need for condition assessment is to understand the present status of the structure, to identify the reasons for material and structural deterioration and to analyze the condition, to calculate the quantities of decayed areas like area of plaster flaking, area of missing masonry, because it is just not calculating a wall area and then say this much of brick, because we would like to keep as as many bricks, old bricks as possible and to repair only the minimum. So, that quantity actually is very important for further specification or uh, starting before we start actually conservation work. To prioritize the conservation items of work in different phases. So, uh, this is the need for the condition assessment which has to be very accurate and very and again I am saying it is an ongoing process because while the intervention has started we can sort of uh, discover some more problems. Uh, this is again the example from Patiala in Panja which is done by Shalini Dashgupta another expert in conservation. As you can see that the with on the conservation I am just showing one wall internal wall that how this marking this legion is very important and how the marking has been given to show the amount of the damage due to the water or the plaster flaking and others to different types of materials. I have also given the reference one can sort of see this type of uh, documents to refer on how uh, condition assessment, condition mapping is done for the old historic structures. Uh, as I say, it is not only the drawing is very important to do a photographic documentation properly number, properly record actual position of the photograph shown because they will remain as a historic document to show that what states that historic structure was there. After that thing, so once we have done the major drawing, we have understood the uh, intervention or the causes of decay and then condition mapping, then comes that what are the intervention options. As I say that there can be various intervention option, our thumb rule is the minimum intervention and we have to understand that what. And there also there are certain measures which are the immediate, there are uh, measures which has to be taken immediately and there may be intermediate and then the long term measure. So, these three types of measure have to be a part of a, any conservation document and but before we start I say the quantification of de, uh, defects and preparing the specification is a very important work is different from uh, new building. 
so each kind of problem in area volume length numbers is required for preparing the specification. The for preparing the specification one has to have a general idea good knowledge about the materials for which there as I see the if it was in lime mortar it has to be done in lime mortar some admixture can be done, but what is the effect of that admixture and other things you can see this is an uh, an image from Shantiniketan when this was done by ASI uh, in Vishwabharati, some the almost uh, quite a few heritage structures were beautifully restored and preserved. And you can see that they are the various integrants of a traditional uh, process of lime mortar preparation, and they are quantificate. They are actually making that in the quantities and preparing that. It needs a different type of skill, very different from the present system of construction. And we just cannot take, uh, so each and every building depending on the material, depending on the method, depending on the status of decay, it needs a different type of specification. It cannot be equated with a normal standard specification. And uh, the rate analysis and preparing the conservation estimate, the how means uh, it may need a different type of skill, different type of manpower. Uh, this brings us to the question of making a team for conservation uh, and uh, the what is the time period which will be required and uh, the team structure who will be the experts depending on the cause and other things, the nature and the work management plan, how the phase wise. Uh, phase wise uh, preparation of the work will be done and uh, phasing of the conservation as I say again the different types of mitigation measures and others. So, these are very preliminary idea about how the documentation process will go on uh, as I say that first is the uh, your uh, uh, understanding the measured drawing which will make a basis for that and the different powers has to be documented and on the measure drawing one has to do the problem identification and also give suggestion for that what are the further investigation which has required for that preliminary investigation report and the further investigation record it is an ongoing process and then what are the immediate measure intermediate measure and the long term process and then the condition mapping which is very very important and very accurately it has to be done with the proper expertise um, that what is the state of conservation is again a multidisciplinary work depending on the status, depending on the structure, depending on the problems we have to involve a different types of uh, speciali specialist and uh, where even the historian, uh, the archaeologist, the documents uh, it needs a lot of research to understand that. And based on that one has to find out that what are the intervention measures and then we talked about the divergence approaches of conservation there it will come into the uh, useful that what should be done with the structure, the value and significance, the divergent approach all now will has to be put together before we, we sort of see that what is the proper conservation approach for this specific structure. And then depending on that we have to find out the estimate specification and make a team and facing of the map. In our next lecture we will try to take up one structure and try to see that how sort of we can make a sort some sort of an understanding of this documentation process. Another part of the documentation process is a listing the category that which category it is. Um, again, because uh, all structures are not world heritage size or all structures are not nationally important. So, the listing is a very important part which has a policy decision which has also a legal implication. Uh, we will talk more about that, but listing the categorization or category or grading generally what is called is a very important part. Uh, we may not talk about grading at this stage or the next stage, but we probably will take up on some structure to see that how the documentation can help in understanding the decay and uh, makes a uh, documentation. Thank you.